What's up? Not so much. Corona times are really scary. But we're used to that by now, I guess. Yeah, I can relate to you, but um, maybe we need a few more colors in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. Do you have any idea? Let me think about it. Um, do you know Tom from last year? I have a little guy. Yeah, exactly he. Um, and he produced some wolf shore pulses. And I think we can do something with them. Let me show it to you. Yeah, let's go. A couple of months ago, you were told in a video by the laser physicist Tom how to acquire short pulses via a gas-filled hollow core fiber. And to get a refresher how they did it, just click on the link up here in the corner. And by doing so, please leave a like to appreciate their masterpiece. So, now we all know how to get short pulses. But what can we do with those now? For instance, we can observe the magic of a nonlinear effect called non-collinear four-wave mixing. This is incomparable when it comes to illustrating why Professor Paulus himself likes to call nonlinear optics the science of new colors. Before you get to see the magic mentioned, let's give you some background information about it. So we will begin by briefly recalling the process of four-wave mixing. We have three incident frequencies, omega-1, omega-2 and omega-3 which generate a new frequency omega-4. Of course, both the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum must be fulfilled. Thus, we obtain that only two out of three incident frequencies are converted to the third one and the new fourth one. In the photon picture, two of the three incident photons are destroyed and simultaneously two new photons are created. One with the energy of the third photon and one with the new energy given by energy conservation. In our case, all frequencies are the same. That means we have a degenerate four-wave mixing. Now we consider the collinear case, meaning all three beams have the same propagation direction. By the momentum conservation, also the new frequency and the amplified third beam have the same direction. Switching now to the case that we are actually interested in, non-collinear four-wave mixing. Here, the three beams are incident from different angles, but still focused on the same spot in the nonlinear crystal. In the experiment, this is ensured by using a special triple pinhole. With the incident momentum vectors, we can calculate the direction of the new, fourth one, which will appear in the previously blank corner of our sketch. This game can now be continued by determining further combinations of the four vectors. And when the crystal additionally provides second-order nonlinearity, we can even calculate the positions of the second-order frequencies, or more precisely, the sum frequencies. All in all, we obtain a fairly pretty beam pattern, which grows with increasing intensity, because then higher combinations are possible. Although it looks quite complicated, it can be explained by simple vector addition. And if you take different incidence frequencies, it will become even more colorful. So I think that's enough of a basis for the theoretical part. Now let's move on to the practical one. After all, we're not standing in this beautiful lab for nothing. So let's have a look onto our setup. At first, we are coming out of the well-mentioned hollow core fiber with our laser pulse. And after that, we can reduce the intensity via this ND filter, which is followed by a breadball consisting out of this compressor, which is adding negative dispersion to our pulse, and these wedges, which are adding some positive dispersion to shorten it. Subsequently, we do have three pinholes to create three beams, and by this focusing mirror, we can now focus these very three beams right into the BBO crystal, and in the end we can see them on our screen. Here we have another overview from above, which should help you to better understand the beam path in the setup. We get our pulse from the hollow core fiber, which is located at the top left of the image. In the middle, you can see the compressor with the wedges, while on the lower right side, the nonlinear optical process takes place. So, after some tuning of the components with the magical hands of a physicist, the final result is as follows if we turn off the light.
So, that should be it already with our today's experiment. We hope it was interesting and we could make the life a little bit more colorful. Thank you.